Human Rights Commission also asked the government to pass legislation banning your and my right to spank our children in our homes and use tax money to offer courses teaching against spanking. Well, the uh, question remains, what does the Bible have to say about this? This being said, Brunpunt investigated and invited a spokesperson from the Human Rights Commission, Mr. Isaac Mangena. Also from the Joshua Generation Church, Advocate Nadine Bodnos, and of course from Christian News Network, well-known Mr. Philip Rosenthal. To my respondents, a warm-hearted radio pulpit, a good morning to you and welcome. Mr. Mangena, let me start with you. Well, corporal punishment was outlawed in 1996 in schools, but now you're aiming at churches. Why is that? What would that message be? What is the message you'd like to get across? Thanks for this opportunity and good morning even to my, 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 my colleagues on the other side. Um, First of all, we should recognize the fact that in this country we've got um, laws that govern this country and we've got a constitution uh, of this land. And uh, corporal punishment, not only in schools, but corporal punishment in general, was outlawed in 1996 to basically to say we, we shouldn't uh, continue uh, uh, administering this system on, 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 on the children. So it's not like the issue has become an issue like recently, but it has always been there we, we we as the human rights commission in particular have been uh, advocating for this to be to be stopped we have engaged government to ensure that this this stops and also uh, in, in 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 2014 late 2014 we also held some uh, dialogues with members of the church, school, and even government uh, in Johannesburg to talk about this issue of corporal punishment and to say we cannot continue to go on like this uh, with this because of it's illegal, it's, it's a criminal act in particular. In particular. Mr. Mangena, can I ask you what happened that you felt the need to contact the Joshua Generation Church? In fact, what was the trigger, so to speak? In this current case, we, we basically launched an investigation following complaints received from uh, uh, two, three individuals and, uh, and, and an organization, Song Agenda Justice, who were basically complaining that the teachings by the by Joshua Generation Church purposefully promote and teaches the use of corporal punishment on children by their parents. Uh, and they were basically saying we should uh, investigate whether this is a violation of the rights of the child to be protected from maltreatment, neglect, and all these abuses that are there. So that's how we basically got involved in this matter. Nadine, I want to bring you in here from Joshua Generation. You as a church, how did you receive this message from the Human Rights Commission and what are you going to do about it? Thank you for the opportunity. I want to go back to the previous question you asked um, to Mr. Mangina of SHRC, how we received the, the complaint. Now, I think it's very important to put this complaint in its proper context. Um, Joshua Generation Church first took notice of this complaint when we received the complaint um, from the Human Rights Commission in 2013. It then came to our attention that this complaint was in fact um, made by a couple, so Adrian and Mrs. Hannah Mosbeth. They um, have never been members of Joshua Generation Church. They've never been visitors to the church. What we do know is that they are part of or they associate themselves with various anti-religion, atheist and or secular humanist activist groups. They are in fact driving a very anti-religion agenda. And what we know is that um, they've been very clear even, you know, on, on um, social media that their mission is, is to actually use human rights organizations such as the Human Rights Commission, the Commission for Gender Equality, to drive their rights forward. And I'm, I'm quoting the exact word here, to, to drive their rights forward to block the backward way of evangelical churches like jo um, Joshua Generation Church. So we see here a very clear anti-religion, secular humanist agenda. So this is the first time that we receive knowledge about this complaint. They've never made any such complaint to the church. Important to know that the complaint was not based on any actual incident of child abuse. As a church, Joshua Generation um, Church is 100% against child abuse, believes that it um, should be prosecuted with child abuse in terms of existing laws. What is very important, however, is to note that it is not correct, as the Commission has found in this instance, that Josh Jean promotes or advocates thanking. The fact is 
And the Church has made this very clear to the Human Rights Commission that it has no official stance on spanking. It believes it is up to every parent to decide for themselves what is best for their children, because as we know, every child is unique. What we do see is that the Bible does discipline in various scriptures, or does mention discipline, child correction in various scriptures, as one of the ways in which to shape a child's character. But again, each parent should be free to interpret those scriptures for themselves, to bring up their children according to their own moral or religious convictions. That's between them and God. Not in the Yeah, I just want to pick up before before you, before you call if you call on the next uh, uh, panelist. Uh, the, the fact that the church is actually teaching this is, is for example, the, the 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 church teaches you to love thy neighbour. It, it, it doesn't mean that the church itself is actually loving the neighbor. It's basically saying the people within the church should take that as a message to go back home and love the neighbor. So if you say to the people in the church, go back home and discipline uh, children in this way, spend them, do this because of the the, 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 the scripture says so, the people will go, will go directly back home. And it's, 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 it's a clear evidence of um, basically uh, uh, saying to, you, you basically, uh, uh, saying to, 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 to the people that they can actually uh, uh, do this is correct and it's something that they, 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 they should do. Yes, we didn't we didn't find any evidence that the church itself is administering uh, that, but the, the fact that it's teaching that to, to its con congregants, it, it basically says that you're actually saying they should actually go back home and do this. Mr. Mangena, she also mentioned the fact that the people who laid the complaint with the Human Rights Commission are not members with the church with Joshua Generation. Your response to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if, if, if the documents are in the public domain, it doesn't have to be the members of the church, but if I know that it doesn't have to be the member of your family if there is something wrong within your household. If the neighbor sees that there is something wrong within the household, suspect that there's a crime happening within the household, they have got that right to actually come to the police and, and report that member. So even if they're not members of the, of, the, of the church, but they see what is going on in the church and they can access the church's website and emails and maybe even uh, have um, family members and friends who are going to the same church and they've told them about this, then they can still come and say this is what is happening and yes as the human rights commission after getting that uh, evidence we realize that yes indeed that's what the church is doing point taken thank you so much mr mangana philip i want to bring you in here what about the christian bible and its instruction on corporal punishment which is contrary to what the human rights commission are saying what would your response be there's five scriptures, uh, all of them in the book of Proverbs, that specifically say that parents should uh, spank their children. For example, uh, Proverbs 13, 24, He who spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is careful to discipline him. These scriptures say that uh, spanking imparts wisdom and that they save the child from from death in terms of what that could uh, happen if they go in the wrong direction. They say that it's loving. So I think that the Human Rights Commission needs to consider that this is not something which Joshua Generation made up uh, in a manual, that this is something which is in the Bible, which is in every church, and much the same things are being taught in, in most churches in South Africa, and so they're not specifically just making a complaint against uh, uh, Joshua Generation Church, and the other churches will continue to teach this regardless of what the Human Rights Commission says or doesn't say. So I'm wondering what they expect us to do with the scriptures. Do they want us to take a pair of scissors and cut those uh, verses out of the Bible? Or are we not allowed to quote those things? Uh, rather bizarre. But then further than that, I, I would like to respond to something that was said a little earlier, that corporal punishment was outlawed in 1996. Uh, that was only in schools. Uh, I don't see a reference there to the home, which they're pushing to do now. And so it seems that the Human Rights Commission is uh, trying to uh, advocate a, a new interpretation of the law and also impose this on the church uh, before this has even been adopted by, as law or by, through any sort of co public consultation or anything of that sort. A case that I'm aware of where this was brought to court was simply dismissed by the judge without being, even being heard. Yeah, so I think that they, that interpretation is stretching uh, what the actual decision was. The Constitutional Court confirmed the decision for schools in, in the year 2000. Uh, but then I also would like to challenge the Human Rights Commission representative on three other cases where he made allegations against uh, Christian organizations or individuals in which he escalated what was... Uh, 
happening, which was nothing to do with violence, and made the allegation that such thing could could lead to violence. That is uh, the Killian wedding venue case, Rosebank Union case, and also the uh, John Kualani case. And in my opinion, this is defamatory. The same thing is being leveled at uh, Joshua Generation Church, and uh, I, I do respect that there must be limits on people advocating for for violence and that's why when the intimidation act is there and such like but you know this to me is is, is stretching reality look i think i think first first first, first we should really uh, look at why we we why the the, the 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 laws or the constitution or the people who made the constitution decide to to outlaw corporal punishment both at at, in, in the home and also in, in schools. I think uh, the issue was basically because of during that time, during apartheid years, anti education and Christian national education were basically designed to support apartheid by schooling children to be these passive citizens who should accept authority, social injustice, inequality without any questioning. And it, the use of, of the cane was, 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 was basically uh, used as a means of subjugating them to say they should actually be. Uh, submissive to, 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 to whatever that the teachers and everyone and even the parents at home are saying, which is wrong because if you look at the, at the, at the, at the, at the levels of um, 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 the many learners today, uh, violence remaining a, a regular part of their school experience because of you, 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 you cannot come and say spanking or beating a child because even this spanking doesn't have uh, the levels of this is the, the, uh, how much you can spank, this is how much you can actually this is now overboard, you're no longer spanking, you're actually assaulting this person so it, it doesn't really, it's not clear what, it, even that uh, uh, the Bible, uh, the scriptures the five, the five scriptures that, that were quoted it, they don't really say how, how how much of that spanking can you give uh, to, 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 to basically arrive to any 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 any, any uh, 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 consequences, but then you should also remember that the, the, the corporal punishment, with this corporal punishment, both in the home and also in, in schools, children have died as a result of this. We have we've had cases in, in, in Pumalanga, we have cases in the, in the free state and in KZN where children have actually died because of corporal punishment. And there is uh, there is um, a difference between punishing and actually disciplining a child, and those differences should really Come, 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 come through because discipline, discipline behavior means uh, the way of behaving that shows respect and responsibility. Whereas punishment is basically uh, uh, about insist, insisting on obedience, um, you know. And 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 and, and, and I, th I think we we should really try try and get 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 an understanding of what we really want to achieve when we say it's okay, it's okay to spank uh, the children. Nadine, I want to bring you in here. The Human Rights Commission has instructed the Joshua Generation pastors and also their staff to attend courses desensitizing them against a corporal punishment. What would your church response be to this instruction? Firstly, as we made it very clear also, um, or the church made it very clear to the Human Rights Commission, um, the couple who, or let me start again, the, the course notes in, in question, uh, we refer to the various scriptures in the Bible relating to, to child correction. Those course notes were prepared and taught by a couple in the church at the time um, was employed by the church. It was a voluntary course and it was open to the public, a once off course in the 17 years of existence of the church. Now, that couple has since left the employee of the church. In fact, the couple left the of the church in 2013 already. So, it is really impossible for me to, to imply because uh, those, those pastors are no longer in the employ of Joshua Generation Church. So, the church does not have power over that couple anymore in any event to direct them to come to the sensitization training. Let's really get to the, to the heart and the principle of the matter here. The problem here is that even if even if the church wanted to, it cannot comply with what the HRC is is asking it to do. Namely, firstly, to give a written, a written undertaking on behalf of its members that it will never that it will not believe, teach even to one another, or, or preach or live out these, these scriptures for those believers who do believe that the Bible commands them to to spank their children, always in love at times we need it, always within the bounds of the law. The 
church simply does not have that authority. The Bible doesn't give the, the church that authority. Um, the law doesn't give the church that authority. It is up to every parent, um, according to their interpretation of the Bible, to decide um, how they want to interpret the scriptures for themselves. And for that reason, even if the church wanted to, it, it, it cannot. It cannot comply with the undertaking of the Human Rights Commission. The fear here is that the state is crossing the sacred line of family. It's interfering where it has no business. If, if, if the Human Rights Commissions are adopted by Parliament and spanking, even a non-injurious kind is criminalized, um, it will result in, in hundreds of innocent parents who love their children, only once what is good for them being arrested, prosecuted and jailed. Um, children will be removed from parents. Um, as is already happening in other countries where spanking has been banned, such as uh, such as in Sweden. And one shot is to, thought, uh, to, to, to think of the damage that this will do to children and to, to families. In fact, I may mention here that last year already, we've seen recently in the news that um, children um, were removed from parents who were homeschooling them. So the reason why these children were removed from the parents in Natal, in the Maritzburg, is because the children were being taught Christian education at the home, and the social worker felt that this was religious indoctrination. The children were removed from the parents and only reinstated after a court case, um, only reconciled with the parents months later. Now, if something like this can happen in the instance of, of home education, um, it's really frightening to think what would happen on a charge of assault. There's no doubt that, that, that these will be the consequences if, if all spanking were to be criminalized. Um, apart from this interference with family love, the report violates the religious freedom of those people of faith who do believe that it is their parental duty to give their children appropriate guidance, including at times with spanking within the bounds of the law. And here I'm not only talking about Christians, I'm talking about people of all faiths, um, Jewish people, Muslim people, um, for millions of people in South Africa, this is a central tenet of their faith. And in fact, Josh Jane is supported in its position by religious leaders representing 12 million people in South Africa, including the Jewish Board of Deputies and the Muslim Judicial Council. This is not a figure to be taken lightly by the Human Rights Commission, but unfortunately, they failed to take it into account and simply run, run roughshod over the, um, the attitudes and the, and the desires of the people of South Africa and what they believe to be best for their children. So to come back to your question, in the circumstances, the church unfortunately has no option but to appeal the finding for the sake of protecting family, for the sake of protecting freedom to believe in South Africa. The report is simply wrong. In a number of factual, legal, and procedural areas, it is not correct that Mr. Mangina said that the Constitution has decided to outlaw corporal punishment um, in the home. The Constitution doesn't say anything about corporal punishment, and neither do the international treaties on which the Human Rights Commission relies. And apart from that, it is actually in terms of the Constitution, not for the Human Rights Commission to be changing the law. This is a function that in terms of the Constitution has been assigned to Parliament and to the courts, not to the Human Rights Commission, and therefore the Human Rights Commission is even exceeding its powers in finding as it did against Joshua Generation Church. And again, for those reasons, unfortunately, the Commission leaves the Church no choice but to appeal, not for the sake of the Church, but for the alone, but for the sake of believers in South Africa, um, pastors, um, parents and children for the sake of protecting family and religious freedom. Look, the, 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 it, 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 the, the, the law is there already since 1996. It's the enforcement. That's why we are pleading with cabinet to basically ensure that the enforcement is, is being dealt with. And I mean, why the urge to actually punish a child? Why the urge to discipline a child? Because it, it can't... What, there are other alternatives to disciplining a child. It's an ongoing process. Why don't you give a place? Why don't you lead by example? If that in that way you are disciplining the child, you are showing the child that this is what needs to happen. Why the urge to actually take a stick, a rod, and say, "Let me beat this child because of the child did not do this, the child did not do that." You, sh you need to. You, you, we, we are busy saying, don't use dirty language, don't swear, don't do this. But us as parents, us as adults, are actually doing that. Why don't we lead by example instead uh, as an alternative to corporal punishment, as an alternative to spanking? Why don't we be realistic on certain expectations that we have on the children? Forget about the Human Rights Commission, forget about what the church is doing. But as people, as leaders, as, as, as parents ourselves, we really need to, 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 to say, what is it that we think the children are doing wrong, that we actually are uh, doing right? What is it that we can do to ensure that we replace that thinking? We, you can, we, there is this overwhelming edge to actually say, I just need to beat a child, I just need to uh, discipline a child because of uh, the scriptures are saying I should do so. No, it cannot be right. The, child, the children have got rights. It's a criminal offense, madam, for, for, for you to actually take a rod to beat a child. You can actually go to jail for that. But we've, we've got a problem with enforcement in this country. That's why we are calling on the police and even the, the departments to ensure that this is, this is enforced properly through cabinet and ensure that people who are actually doing this are brought to book.
Well, ladies and gents, time has unfortunately caught up with us. Can I ask you to be very brief in your response? What would the solution be to the problem? What would the way forward be? Philip, can I start with you, please? I would argue that if we look at these, uh, this issue together with another list of similar cases, it seems to me that the uh, Human Rights Commission is currently abusing their powers and uh, intimidating various organizations, wasting their time taking them to court, and that there's a need for uh, other organs of state, such as Parliament, to inquire into these issues and uh, their abuses of power. And I think that the Christian Church should not be intimidated by this abuse of power, but needs to continue teaching the Bible and uh, to teach it very uh, clearly. I also would uh, strongly disagree with some of the claims that are being made by Mr. Mangena now in this interview about banking being a criminal offence that was only outlawed in schools as far as I can see. I don't see uh, any evidence of that. And also these three allegations that he's made against uh, these other organizations and these other cases also uh, in escalating an allegation which is for example somebody doesn't want to do a, a host the same sex wedding but then he implies that this uh, is similar to violence or can lead to violence you know to me there's a there's a big difference between christian belief and uh, and violence what would you say is the answer then philip well, I think that the, the Human Rights Commission uh, not only needs uh, this case to be uh, appealed and corrected, but also the, uh, needs to be restrained from, in these multiple other cases, from uh, trying to promote a, a particular view and interpretation of human rights, which is not found in the Constitution, but is being invented by their lawyers. Mr. Mangena, can I ask you to be brief? Do you think there is a solution to the problem do you think there is a way forward sir let, let me just say that our beliefs uh, should not be uh, seen as above the law whether it's a christian belief whether it's a cultural belief whether is is Utwala or any other thing it should not violate the rights of any other person be, it, be the woman be the child or be the man any other person so we should not see our beliefs as superior than the law of the land so uh, i just wanted to say that but also i think there is a, a full intention uh, from the commission to continue to prepare, to pursue this matter in partnership with all other interested parties, including the church, including uh, uh, Joshua Church. I know that they, they, they've already indicated that they want to appeal our finding, which they are really welcome and they are protected by the law to do so, to basically start talking about this issue so that we can find each other and we can actually ensure that we protect the rights of the children. Nadine, thank you so much. And uh, the final word belongs to our lady respondent. Nadine, your response, please. Want to emphasize again, that Joshua Generation Church and as I would believe the entire Christian church in South Africa um, in accordance with the scripture is 100% against abuse of children. Um, abuse of children should by all means be prosecuted in terms of existing laws. There is, however, and this is what the Israel seems to be missing, a fundamental and a very obvious difference between abuse and non-injurious loving spanking. There's a difference in the act involved, in the intent with which it's done, in the attitude of the parents when it is being done, and in the effect. Now, once again, the concern is that should the Human Rights Commission um, uh, recommendations be adopted, that it will actually do greater damage um, than, what, uh, than what currently they fear the damage is being caused by spanking. Contrary to what the report suggests, South African law already firmly protects children against domestic violence and abuse, and our view is that creating another law that bans banking in the home will be little more than just mystery taxpayers' money and government's resources into court cases and sensitization trainings involving potentially responsible parents and families that are not at risk. And surely government should direct their energy and our money towards those families and communities that, that are generally vulnerable and generally in need. And in the circumstances, therefore, um, as I said, the church will be appealing. It unfortunately has no choice but to be on. Hopefully the ITRC will reconsider its position and hopefully the ITRC will recognize that it is there to protect not only the rights of liberal activists in South Africa, but the rights of all citizens in South Africa. That includes the constitutional right to freedom to believe, teach and preach what one believes, to live it out
fall into one's face um, and that they will in fact protect um, the constitution and constitutional rights including the religious freedom of, of all citizens in South Africa. And that is really what we hope that the, that the Human Rights Commission will do in this case and if the matter will ultimately come to court or to Parliament that the same attitude will be taken by those forums who are prop properly seized with the, with the jurisdiction to consider this matter. With that, our sincere thanks to our respondents for their participation. Firstly, to Mr. Isaac Mangenov. Also, to advocate Nadine Barnos from the Joshua Generation down in Cape Town. And lastly, but not the least, uh, Mr. Philip Rosenthal from Christian News Network. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your participation. Please note that uh, the opinions in this program is not necessarily that of Radio Pulpit or the announcer on duty, but for you, our listeners listener to make a informed decision. Till we meet again, keep well, God bless you and shalom. Thank Thanks you.